Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another episode of Road to AWS and I hope you all are doing good and doing your bit in this war against the invisible enemy that we have. So stay safe everyone, that's the only thing that can help us defeat this. Let's get back to the topic. So we are on the verge of completing our phase one of the Road to AWS series and today we have a very interesting topic with us, our very own NoSQL database offering from AWS. So sit back, relax, and let's get started off with AWS DynamoDB. So when we start going over the AWS documentation of DynamoDB, the first thing that you read is Amazon DynamoDB is a fast and flexible NoSQL database service for any scale. So we all know what fast and scalable means and what a database means, but when it comes to NoSQL, Let's get some data on this. So I'm sure most of you have already used a NoSQL database like Cassandra or MongoDB, but I would just take a few minutes to explain this as we will see the difference between them and the SQL database in brief. So when we speak of NoSQL, the first thing that you should understand is that NoSQL doesn't necessarily mean not SQL. It means not only SQL or not just SQL. So the basic difference when people speak about NoSQL databases is that they say you cannot have relationship between tables and it is called a non-relational database. But it's not all true. Yes, you can create relations in NoSQL databases. I'm sure you know this if you have already worked on Cassandra. But having said that, the way the NoSQL database handles relationships is a bit different from the traditional databases because they support SQL-like querying languages to extract data from the database. And more importantly, because NoSQL database don't necessarily adhere to the principles of ACID, which are the atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability. So as I have already mentioned here in the slide as well, that NoSQL, that is the non-SQL or not only SQL database, store data in a format other than relational tables. So which can include documents, key value pairs, wide column data structure, and graphs as well. So what it says is, rather than storing in traditional relational tables, we have the flexibility of storing data in complex forms, such as key value pairs or documents or graphs as well. So let's see a visual representation of the offerings that are from these databases. Okay, so for the SQL, you could use the entity relational model or the entity relationship model the table relationship model actually that we speak with databases like Postgres, MySQL, MSSQL or Oracle. So next we have is our OLAP database, OLAP which stands for Online Analytical Processing. So OLAP allows users to analyze database information from multiple database systems at one time while relational databases are considered to be two-dimensional and OLAP data is multi-dimensional meaning the information can be compared in many different ways. So these are mostly used for data mining and, and huge online data processing for the relational data. And when it comes to NoSQL, we have a variety of solutions for us. We have the wide column where you have a single huge column structure and you feed all the data in the single row and you have mostly no relations involved. And next is the graph database. As you know, LinkedIn uses as well to have a connection between entities that can be used later for relationships. And the next one that we have here is the document database, which are mostly used to have a data storage for entities, which can be termed as a document, but mostly encoded. So the encoding mostly that I use include XML or YAML files or JSON files and these type of data. And the very famous key value store. So which we have discussed before as well with Elastic Cache, which is mostly used for caching and storing simple data with a key and a value pair. So now as we have seen all this, let's see what AWS has to offer. So for the relational database that you have, we have Amazon RDS, and for the OLAP, we have AWS Redshift, which actually is based on the Postgres SQL database. And for the key value pair, we have the DynamoDB, which can be a replacement for the Elastic Cache. And the wide column also, we can have it with the DynamoDB and AWS Neptune, which provides us the flexibility to, to use graph database and document DB as well, which is a primary intake that we have for AWS, which in the background uses MongoDB. 
So that is for the document store. Okay, so I hope this was clear. So let's move on then. So now I hope you might have a clear understanding of what NoSQL databases are. So we on this session won't be digging upon how and what are the differences, but you can surely read a lot about them for more information. So now let's move on to the DynamoDB then. So Amazon DynamoDB is a managed NoSQL database service. So Amazon DynamoDB is a key value and document database that delivers single digit millisecond performance at any scale. And as we know, it can act as a replacement for Elastic Cache and it is known to provide sub millisecond performance that is, Elastic Cache is known to provide sub millisecond performance. DynamoDB is also not that far behind. It also gives you faster performance with single digit millisecond performance. And DynamoDB is serverless with no servers to provision, patch, or manage, and no softwares to install as well, or maintain, or operate. And that's a very good thing. And DynamoDB automatically scales tables up and down to adjust for capacity and maintain performance as well. And for resilience in DynamoDB, availability and fault tolerance are built in, thus eliminating the need to architect your application for these capabilities. And this is very important because you should always remember what the service has to offer. And DynamoDB also provides both provisioned and on-demand capacity modes so that you can optimize costs by specifying capacity per workload or paying for only the resources you consume. And one more important thing is, DynamoDB is a key value and document database that can support tables of virtually any size with horizontal scaling. And this enables DynamoDB, sorry, and this enables DynamoDB to scale to more than 10 trillion requests per day with peaks greater than 20 million requests per second over petabytes of storage. And it provides automatic data replication over three availability zones in a single region. So you should remember that three availability zone, automatic data replication over three availability zone in a single region. Okay. And watch the video till the end. We have a very special visual explanation on this one as well. And for backups with DynamoDB, the data is securely backed up to S3. And when it comes to integration with other services, DynamoDB provides integration with Elastic MapReduce, the, uh, the EMR, and the data pipelines and Kinesis as well. And for the security aspect, security and access controls can be applied using Amazon IAM services. So when it comes to consistency or read consistency, DynamoDB provides both strong and eventual consistency. So what does it mean? So let's suppose you have a table called employee in India. Uh, let's suppose we have the IP South 1 region and in US, let's suppose we have US West 2, which is Oregon. So if you have the same table across regions, they are not considered to be same tables anymore. So it's not magic that the data will replicate across the region or in case should also be available, replicated across multiple availability zones. For this, we need consistency because with all the experience that we have with networking, we know with cloud, there comes latency. So remember this, eventual consistency means when you read data for a DynamoDB or when you read data from a DynamoDB, the response might not reflect the results of the recently completed write operations. The response might include some stale data. So if you repeat your read requests for a short time, after a short time, the response should return the latest data. And with strong consistency, on the other hand, what, what happens there is when you request a strongly consistent read, DynamoDB returns a response with the most up-to-date data, reflecting the updates from all prior write operations that were successful. So, however, this consistency comes with some disadvantages. Okay, you might get the latest data every time, but there will be some disadvantages to it. So, what are the disadvantages to it? So, strong consistent reads may have a higher latency than the eventual consistency reads because it will take some time to gather all the information so there will be latency and strongly consistent reads are not supported on global secondary indexes which we will discuss about this in a short while and dynamodb has two rewrite capacity nodes for processing reads and writes on your table so the first one that we have here is the on demand and the second one is the provisioned which is default and which is free tier eligible also. Amazon DynamoDB On Demand is a flexible billing option capable of serving thousands of requests per second without capacity planning. So if you choose provision mode, you specify the number of reads and writes per second that you require for your application. And you can choose auto scaling to adjust your table's provision capacity automatically in response to the traffic that you get. And Amazon DynamoDB stores data in partitions 
basically a partition is an allocation of storage for a table backed by ssds and automatically replicated across multiple availability zones within the region and partition management is handled entirely by dynamodb you never have to manage partitioning yourself and you get the pay per use model and you never pay for hardware or services that you're actually not using and for caching this is very important remember this okay so dynamodb dax is very important for the exam so what dax is that it's a fully managed in memory cache for dynamodb so which reduces dynamodb response times from milliseconds to microseconds and when in the exam they ask what can help dynamodb improve performance or latency by caching please opt dax or what we also call as dynamodb accelerators or amazon dynamodb accelerator so as i already mentioned that dynamodb can be used as a key value database in place of elastic cache so that also is provided to us with dynamodb and also you can enable cloudwatch monitoring with this for your logs and everything and it also provides encryption at rest using kms and in flight encryption using ssl so mostly in the exams you must remember that whenever there is a question for like encryption at rest mostly it will be kms and encryption in flight will be ssl okay so i hope this was clear let's move on to the next thing then so let's get into some more details for dynamodb so the data types that it supports are basically there are three that i have mentioned here one is a scalar which basically consists of numbers strings binary boolean and null the second one that we have here is a multi-valued which is a string set number set binary set and the document like list and map and for the data model, it consists of three entities or basically two mostly. So the tables, items and attributes and attributes are basically your key value pairs and tables are, as the name tells you, your non-relational, mostly, mostly non-relational tables and items. When you hear items with respect to DynamoDB, they are just rows. Okay. And they should contain a primary key based on which your DynamoDB creates partition and you access the data. Okay, so next moving on to primary key, I told primary key, so the next thing will be primary key. So the primary key are just like in any other NoSQL database must be unique so that it can find the exact item in the table. And there are two primary keys that you need to understand that they have. So the one is the simple primary key and another one is the composite primary key. And the simple one actually is uh, similar to the standard key value stores like memcached and accessing rows in the SQL table by using the primary key. And the second one, the composite key is basically you specify both the partition key and a sort key. Okay, sort key is used to uh, sort the items in the same partition. So you need both the keys in the composite key. So both of them constitute a single key, which makes it as a composite primary key. And moving on to like LSI and GSI, it would be a bit high level to discuss in depth. We will have a separate video on this and it is not that important for the exam as well. But you need to remember that LSI, uh, local secondary index uses the same partition key as the underlying table but a different sort key to match the pattern to get the data but gsi on the other hand uh, that is the global security index can define an entirely different primary key for a table okay so this basic there is a basic difference between both of them and there are a couple of more important points that we need to remember for the exam as well and uh, for the understanding of dynamodb the first thing is obviously amazon dynamodb streams so a DynamoDB stream is an ordered flow of information about changes to items in a DynamoDB table. So which basically is very important because they can be used for near real time cross region replications, which can move all the transaction that you have to another region so that they can create a replication over there. And we have already discussed the on demand capacity mode before. And one more thing or one more important thing is that DynamoDB has a built in support for asset transactions as we already discussed and on demand backup and point in time recovery as well for the data. I hope this was clear. So let's move on. So we have discussed all the things that make up for the DynamoDB. Let's see how it operates and what it has to offer. And the thing that we are discussing are very important for the exam. So keep up with me on this and let's begin. So most of the time as a solutions architect, it mostly you will be asked about DynamoDB partitions and how does availability work and how does the replication work? Amazon DynamoDB stores data in partitions. Okay, remember this. And a partition is the allocation of storage for the table backed by the solid state drives, which is automatically replicated across multiple availability zones within the particular AWS region. Now, let's see some drama here. 
So we have our AWS region, region A, and where we have hosted our DynamoDB database or the table. So when you create a table, the initial status of the table is creating. And during the phase, DynamoDB allocates sufficient partitions to the table so that it can handle your provision throughput requirements. You can begin writing and reading table data after the table status has changed to active. Okay, so remember that you can begin writing and reading data from the tables once the status has changed to active, from creating to active. Okay, and we have our four partitions here and you read and write based on the consistency we set for our data query. Okay, so as we already discussed that a partition is an allocation of storage for a table backed by SSDs and are automatically replicated across multiple availability zones within the region, it gets done with synchronous replication. So data across multiple partitions also gets replicated with synchronous replications. And let's move on to something that is really important. You want your transactions or data to be replicated to another region, right? So let's suppose region B. So we have DynamoDB streams now, as I already told you, to get near real time cross region replication. So using database streams or the DynamoDB streams, you can basically have cross region replication. So the data that you have on region one can be replicated across the region B. And if you need to have your data to be available across multiple regions, just like this, let's suppose we have region C and region D, then what we go for is DynamoDB global tables. And that is done with async replications. So remember one thing very specifically here, and this is really important for the exam as well, because these are the few tiny things that are uh, that will be asked in the exam. Okay, so you have your client that gets connected to the table that is in region A that has multiple partitions and based on the consistency of the read and write, you basically write onto these partitions and based on the table that you have, like you have multiple primary keys, then you will have multiple partitions to it. And based on that, the data is uh, written on the SSD, which are being replicated with synchronous replication. And if you want your data to be having a cross region replication, then you use DynamoDB streams. And if you want to have your data replicated over multiple regions, then you can use global tables. So I hope this was clear. This is the only thing that you need if you want to just answer the questions on DynamoDB because this is the whole gist of DynamoDB. When it comes to DynamoDB, as we discussed the importance of having partitions, we need to talk about how many partitions do we need? On what basis the partition value is calculated or the number of partition values are calculated? So the read capacity mode controls how you are charged for read and write throughputs and how you manage capacity. So there are two terms here that you need to understand that is a throughput and the size, okay? And you can set the read write capacity mode when creating a table and you can change it later as well. There are two things here, the number of partitions for throughput and the other thing is the partition for size. So let's get to the first one. So the number of partitions, that is the throughput, let's term it as NPT, the read capacity unit for reads divided by 3000 RCU that is a capacity threshold plus the write capacity units that is for the writes divided by 1000 write capacity units. Okay, this is the number of partition for throughputs. Next one, number of partitions based on the terms of size. So the first thing that you need to understand is we will be dividing the table size in GB by 10 GB and then number of partitions will be the max of NPT by NPS. Let's get our diary out. So let's suppose we have the number of partition that is for throughputs. Let's suppose 6,000, that is for the RCU for reads, divided by 3,000 plus 1,000, that is for the RCU for writes, by 1,000 uh, WCU. And that comes as three. And the number of partition in size will be 16. Let's suppose 16 GB for the total size in GB for the tables. So the next one that we have is the number of partition of size, that is the table size in GB, that is 16 GB, let's suppose, by 10 GB. So the 1.6 and the max number of partitions will be the max of 3 comma 1.6 which is obviously 3. So this is the basic calculation that we do or the DynamoDB does to fetch you the number of partitions. Okay so I hope this was cool enough and we have done some mathematical calculations as well. I know that it wasn't necessary to discuss this extensively for DynamoDB with respect to the solutions architect exam but 
we want to learn the trade so we wanted to have some more information than what we learn for the solutions architect exam so i'm sorry if we have skipped some portions if you wish you can note them down in the comment section below and we can have a separate sections on them as well later on so for now i want you to stay at home stay safe relax enjoy the time that you have with your family and hopefully learn something new every day and i want you to hit the like button put a comment and please subscribe if you haven't already this takes a lot of time to basically put around all these images and create a wonderful presentation for you guys just for you guys so please make sure that you're subscribed already and if you haven't then please do subscribe and hit the like button that's all for the episode today of road to aws hope to meet you soon in the next episode of aws until then it's pythonic signing off